I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking now with Kevin Baroni, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, congratulations on being named a Teacher of the Year. What's that feel like? Uh, wow. <laughs> I'm in shock still, you know. I, um, I'm just humbled by the whole process. I, I really had, you know, I've been teaching for 20 years and really had no idea what the uh, the whole course would would how it would where it would take me and and um, the process of of going through and the applications and the interviews just amazing mm -hmm. so it's it's still to this day it's it's kind of I'm just in shock I just can't believe it happened to me mm -hmm. kind of thing. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us you know where you teach and tell us what you teach. Um, I'm a mathematics teacher at Del Campo High School. Um, I started in 1993, and I'm, that was my first job, and I'm still there. So um, mm. it's the same school. I've never been in any other school. Um, I'm married and have three children and three grandchildren, and uh, that's it. That's me in a nutshell. I teach math, uh, mostly geometry and uh, pre-calculus, although I've taught most of the, of the subjects in our curriculum. I haven't taught calculus. So. Mm. So t tell me about math these days. Uh, do you feel that there's enough emphasis on it or maybe too much of an emphasis on it? Uh, where do you see it? I see, I see math, um, I think there needs to be more of an emphasis in uh, the grade school, but not so much um, the way we've been teaching it. I think there needs to be more critical thinking and reasoning uh, taught in the lower grades because we're seeing more and more in the high school that that they don't have some of those skills. So um, I try to do that in my classroom, um, just give them uh, some of those skills where they're actually um, using critical thinking and, and reasoning to solve problems, um, and not just necessarily, you know, problems out of the book, but real life problems or problems, you know, that I make up that are supposedly real life. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, like too much emphasis on on getting the answer as opposed to how did you get the answer? Well, yeah, there's that, and um, I, I've just, I've, through my research and my studies and just other learnings that I've done, um, there, we in math often uh, give the problems and then assign, you know, 25 problems just like it for homework. You know, we'll give two or three examples, and, and really they're, we're just rewarding kids, I think, a lot of times for being good followers, you know, or being able to follow exactly what the teacher did. You know, they'll go back and look at their notes. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I put this X there because that's what the teacher did, as opposed to really thinking through problems. Um, I know, you know, for for my some of my problems, I I want them to really formulate what what do we need to solve this problem. So I try to do some of that um, in my class, mm -hmm. you know, as much as possible. It's pretty hard because it's time consuming, but... Um, Trying to generate some free thinking. Yeah, and, and reasoning, you know. Um, like we, we just got through this year, uh, I just did a, 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 a lesson on um, tides and how, how we can simulate with a graph, a sign graph, uh, what the tides are going to look like and then predict um, you know, how high the tide is going to be uh, for a certain day or for a certain hour. But for me, it just gives them, you know, something real. You know, okay, well, this is where math is used, you know. Um, but to do some of those problems, they have to actually come up with, well, you know, you, I see the boat going up and down, but I have no idea what you're talking about, Brony. Okay, so what do we need, you know? Mm -hmm. And then we go through the process of, what do we need? What, what kinds of things have we learned in the class the last few days that are going to help us solve this problem? But it allows them to think through the kinds of things that they need. Um, and that develops skills that they're going to take, you know, when they forget what the sine curve looks like, it, it still helps them with those reasoning skills. So it's, it's teaching them how to make the connection and how to make something apply to what might be kind of an everyday need. I yeah, mean, it's, it's and, not, and it, how to formulate the, right. the problem. I mean, you know, I don't know from your experience. I know my experience is when I'm doing something in the backyard, construction or something, 
sometimes I'll look at it and go, well, this is an easy problem if I just knew what I needed, you know, to solve it. And right. so, so that formulation of, you know, what's needed is, is often uh, what students are missing. So math is an awfully challenging subject, and it's not for everyone from personal experience. So what do you do to, to motivate students who really find um, math to be challenging and, and they may shy away from it? Well, some of what I just talked about, you mm -hmm. know, applying, okay. uh, making it applicable to, to their everyday lives. Uh, the other thing I do a lot is kind of try to infuse technology um, into my lessons. Uh, I use a Promethean board and I, I put in uh, video and graphics to uh, make it interesting for them. And I try to be as engaging as I can. Um, in the classroom because I think I think part of what being a good teacher is is just you know being engaged you know making them being engaged in the lesson so if I'm engaging as a person and I'm giving them uh, real life problems as much as I can plus the the graphics and the technology whether it's it's them using a little active vote to to type in their responses to questions uh, something that they're used to you know an active vote or their cell phone um, so that, that's how I, I help them, and I think it helps a lot of the, the students be more engaged and, and not feel like math is, you know, such a horrible thing that, you know, mm -hmm. I can't wait to get out of this class. So you find a way to connect with each student to what interests them and... As much as possible. Yeah. It's, 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 a hard, it's a hard process, you know. Um, I just got through reading an article by Dan Meyer, He's, you know, saying math teachers basically go to work every day and and sell a product that nobody wants to buy and that's what he said and he's like wow that's so true mm -hmm. you know it's, a lot of people don't don't understand math and and I'm not saying I'm the save all that's that's gonna get them but I just try my best to to find the things that uh, you know help that kid um, and I think also just my rapport with kids you know teachers will say teachers will always tell you having a good rapport with kids is is huge, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, if they respect you and they know that you're there in their best interest, it, it helps a lot to, to keep them on task. And they keep you on task, I'm sure. For sure, they yeah. know if you're if you're punting that day, yeah. if you're if it's <laughs> fourth and ten and you're punting because you didn't get a good night's sleep or whatever, they know. Yeah. You know, and they know when they're getting shortchanged by teachers. So, um, I mean, they tell you, you know. So, what made you decide to be a teacher? I, I, I developed a love for math, and um, when I was in, uh, actually I was in college, and I was in calculus, and I was walking around my group. We were having a, a study session, a group study session for uh, the final that we were going to take, and I had finished, and I was walking around my group and explaining to the other members of the group. And literally, swear to God, I had never even considered being a teacher. And this guy looked up at me, and I don't even, I wish I knew his name. He looked up at me and said, wow, you just explained that to me better than the teacher did. And I've never understood it until just now. You should be a teacher. And I went, ding. <laughs> uh, so that's, you know, something I can do in my life. And I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. You know, I enjoyed helping. So the more and more I did that, the more I developed that that love for explaining math. And um, I love kids, I love being around kids. So for me, it was a no-brainer. Um, I enjoyed passing on the knowledge that I had and I loved uh, being around younger people, so. So what would you say to the person who's considering teaching as a profession? I would say that you, it takes a special person, but um, if you're if you're interested in doing that, that, you know, really check it out. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, there's a, like for math, for instance, there's a lot of fields that you can go into that require a lot of math, you know, engineering, actuarial work, those kind of things. But if you want to be a math teacher, you know, you have to have not only the passion for math, but the passion for kids and people just in general. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's when you're, when you're a high school teacher, there's much more than than just teaching math, much more. I mean, you are working with students that 
uh, come with problems, you know, they come with problems, their home life, their uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is. So you have to be a good, I would say, social organizer, uh, promoter, as well as math. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's more than just teaching math. You have to be able to manage the classroom, manage people, and have them follow you. So, Well, congratulations to you for being named one of the Teachers of the Year for the San Juan Unified School District. We've been speaking with Kevin Baroni. Thanks for your time. Thank you.